distinguished guests, and most of all, the uh, participants, the delegates to the Israel Model United Nations. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here, to be back here at the College of uh, Academic and Management Studies, which is clearly a great institution that's giving a lot to, uh, to its country, Israel. Um, I'm saying back, this is my second time at the Israel Model UN. I was here last year for the closing ceremony. And I can say I was really impressed by the, the excitement, the enthusiasm, what clearly the great time that the delegates had with each other, learning from each other, talking to each other. And after a week, um, you could see how everybody was brought together and there were real bonds and friendships formed. Perhaps, um, I can't remember what the topic was last year, and I imagine that, and I imagine many of the delegates who participated in it may not even recall what the details of the positions were, resolutions they passed, and debates they had were. But I'm sure they remember the friends that they made, and I think that's a very important uh, contribution of a, of a meeting like this, and I know all the hard work that went into putting it together. So this year I'm here for the, uh, the opening ceremony, so I can only say you have a great, a great week to look forward to, and then you'll make a lot of good friends and have a lot of good conversations and have a really terrific experience, I'm sure. I want to talk a little bit about the, the topic, even though I say it's not, not as important, but still it is important. And when you look at this topic, revolution, anarchy, or evolution, uh, I, I can understand why you might have some misgivings about the future. Because when you look around the world right now, you see a lot of challenging, a lot of challenging problems. You see religious terrorism and extremism seemingly on the rise. You see increasing militarism and the threat of nuclear proliferation in places like Iran or North Korea. You see the global economic challenges that are facing my country, that are facing Europe, that are facing many of the uh, developing countries as well. And the Secretary General mentioned the terrible famine right now in the uh, in the Horn of Africa, there are problems of piracy. There, there are um, there are the threats to the environment, and threats of uh, the of the issues of, of energy security. So all these big problems that the world is facing today, and it, you might say you might look at this with a, from a pessimistic point of view. But I, what I'd like to say is, and I think it's the message of my country is that it's uh, too easy to be doomsayer. It's too easy to be pessimistic. That's the easy, that's the easy way out. And when you look at the, the course of history, the course of development over the past couple of hundred years, past 200 years or so, you can only be optimistic about the future. When you see the growth in economies, the growth in uh, incomes, the reduction of poverty among countries, the poverty disparities, within countries, when you see the extension of, of lifespans, the reduction of disease, the amazing things that have been contributed to the world through innovation and, and new technologies, you can only wonder at that and, and ask yourself, you know, where is it that um, as we go forward, why would tomorrow be worse than today or the past, when the, when the past experience has only been, only been positive. Um, all of these things, all of these good things that I just mentioned, like especially the technologies, bring within them their own, their own challenges. Um, for example, in the area of, uh, of computing and, uh, and uh, Communications, you have the risks of cyber warfare, and, uh, and but the the benefits of these things so far outweigh those risks that they, they need to be pursued and need to look for solutions to to the problems. Um, I want to mention one thing in particular, one of these one of these developments in particular, which is the. Um, the fantastic increase in the use of the internet and communications technologies and what that means for the world of the future. Um, in the past, 
most of the communication in the world has been top down. It's been governments, it's been leaders talking to people through television or radio or newspapers. And what's happening now for the first time is people are able to see up as well as down. It's not just top down, it's bottom up. There's communication in, in all directions. Um, I was talking to one of the organizers of this conference today who explained to me how all the work had been done with people in different countries around the world through, uh, through collaborative, uh, collaborative tools, uh, communication tools. That's a um, wonderful opportunity. It empowers individuals. It gives people, these, these tools give people power in the marketplace, but also political power. And I think that's what we're seeing today, for example, in a lot of the countries in this region, uh, where you see this amazing wave of change that came over countries like Tunisia or Egypt or, or even Yemen, of people seeking to be heard, people seeking to exercise their basic human rights, their basic uh, right to, to develop themselves as an individual and, and as a person. And um, that's another element, I think, a special element that gives us all, all hope in the future. So the final element, I think, that I, I just wanted to mention was sort of where we started, that this model United Nations experience is, a, is an experience of young people getting together, making friends, making new connections, looking at at issues, as, as the minister mentioned, from each other's perspective rather than from their own narrow perspective. Learning and solving problems for tomorrow and not taking the, the easy, way, easy way out. So thank you very much, and I hope you all have a great week.